you know, appreciation of aesthetics. Children don't understand the important things like robot dinosaurs. Right. No, uh, they think they know, but they don't know. You see, when I was a child, I did childish things. And when I became an adult, I realized it was time to do childish things, but at a much higher price point. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and with that, I will say we're live. <laughs> It is Mutants and Masterminds Monday, um, my favorite day of the week um, when, it's, when it's Monday. I really do. We have a good time. We have a lot of fun. Um, we have – so here's the thing. We've been doing this for a while, and you know we've been having fun. We've been uh, talking and yucking it up um, for, for weeks now, and Crystal was like, hey, you know, how about we actually do something that's, you know, speaks specifically <laughs> to the work that we do? And I was like, hmm. That's, I don't know. <laughs> what if we helped people, Troy? <laughs> yeah, right. what if we, <laughs> I don't know. powers just, for good. Exactly. And I was like, you know, it's so crazy. It just might work. And uh, and so we decided um, to, to kind of roll through the process. We're going to do some uh, character creation uh, discussion. But we have with us a very special guest, a, a friend to to all, uh, um, especially to us, we're very, very fond of her. Alice Pang, you are from Babies with Knives, and that's where we all got acquainted with you when you invited, uh, I think you talked to Steve, whom talked to me, who then I worked with Crystal to work with you to get a live stream <laughs> going, and then we all just became BFFs and didn't have to worry about it after that. Is that yes, accurate? Yes, I'm very, I'm very lucky that I became all you guys' BFFs and you became <laughs> mine. I met Steve through Banff, uh, I guess almost two years ago now, though. Long time ago. Really? Wow. Yeah, wow. I think it's been two years almost. That's crazy. I'm, I'm just impressed you'll still talk to us after I spent our one game session emotionally abusing your character and your friends. It, well, that's was, okay. I got to abuse you back when I got to GM for you. So <laughs> True. It was super fun uh, to watch. Um, and of course, that's over on your YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's Babies with Knives, right? Like yes, the, Babies the, with the, Knives. Gotcha. Well, we have the links and everything. I've got, I've compiled uh, a dossier on you that I will share uh, with the community. <laughs> Speaking of the community, you know, we do this and we have folks that come along in the hangout and they do things like um, share links to everybody's business, uh, which <laughs> I think is really phenomenal. Uh, that's Jay Gray, of course. Howdy, Jay. Howdy, folks that are popping in and out. Um, uh, thank you, Brian Scott Bailey, who says the quantums are on. Uh, <laughs> Jacob's here. Look, we got a full house uh sean i'm glad that it's your fi favorite day too because we really do have a good time it's i almost said i'm, I'm glad it's your fart too uh, <laughs> but I'm you didn't trying. and then you feel the need to come in and say it anyway right but it but i didn't really say it i mean but uh, already loved crystal's dress yay <laughs> See? we got a pook out here as well um a pook you're on the list to uh to kind of hang with us in the in the next few episodes um but we are uh, going to dive into character creation. As you got questions or ideas or thoughts, um, compliments for me, um, maybe a super, maybe a couple uh, hosts uh, decorated as superheroes um, or some wig fanfic, uh, do share that in the chat, and I will be certain to interrupt. Um, but let's get started, shouldn't we? Absolutely. I mean, we wanted to start with character creation, apart from the fact that it's where you start, you know, in terms of getting into the game, um, because character creation for Mutants and Masterminds is often seen as its biggest roadblock. Um, and a lot of people uh, have heard or have been told that character creation for Mutants and Masterminds is just so complicated that uh, it's, it's a turnoff and it's hard to get into the game. And so we're here to explain to you that uh, character creation for Mutants and Masterminds is really only as complicated as you want it to be. Yep, you've got a lot of options for how complicated you want it to be and how time consuming you want it to be. Mm -hmm. uh, a and question for the three of you. Um, mm -hmm. how, do you really dive into the character creation stuff um, as, as sort of an exercise to kind of keep things sharp and to kind of, you know, or, or do you go quick and dirty or is it all the above? Um, depends kind of on what I'm working on mm -hmm. so far as that goes. Um, I had a lot of fun. I mean, it, I designed a lot of the, you know, I designed the character creation, so I like playing with it. 
Um, yeah. But uh, I have to say, I, I have had a lot of fun uh, when we've done a lot of our licensing, um, adapting characters to the character creation system when presented with a, hey, build this character um, sort of challenge. Um, I find those are oftentimes a lot of fun to play around with. When we, when we licensed uh, wild cards, um, building all of those characters, some of whom have really off the wall like abilities and the designs um, was was a lot of fun. You know, interesting. I'm I'm reading some of the conversation uh, in the chat, and it's phenomenal. I just to sort of give everybody a little bit of a uh, to put your mind at ease. They're saying you know like they they really enjoy character that uh, they don't see how it's difficult. Um, one person, oh, Sean says, uh, you know, some people think Eminem uh, character creation is hard. Have they never played champions? <laughs> a lot of people these days have not played champions. No. Yeah. True. Very it's true. Cool. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, for folks that are watching and listening, do me a favor, uh, share some of your thoughts on how you can, part of this, the mission and the vision of what we're doing here is to introduce new people to this, uh, to this process. And so if you've got tips and tricks uh, on how you onboard folks, and then um, uh, let me know if you'd like me to, uh, as far as our, our panelists, um, let me know if you'd like me to screen share uh, any of the character sheets, because I got them up and ready to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, we talk about it in all of the books, or all of the, the hero handbooks that, that, you know, the basic process of figure out what kind of character you want to make and figure out what elements are important to you. And then uh, from there, it breaks down into like spending hero points, but mm -hmm. hero points is really just, or power points rather, but power points are just one option for character creation. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the the easiest and fastest thing you can do is grab any of the hero archetypes in uh, the Basic Heroes Handbook, or uh, I mean, any of our setting books have sample heroes in them at various power levels, and pick up one of those. You can give it whatever name, description you want. You can change around some description or descriptions. So if you want a if you want to play an energy controller, but decide they throw knives that is totally within the the scope of the game and their babies yeah. and <laughs> before we went live we talked about the fact that steve needs to be drawn as a caricature or as a superhero that summons <laughs> m&ms and you can even skin that as a crime fighter so you can take the crime fighter build and just make that because he <laughs> could draw gadgets and such like that he's M &M. Based gadgets <laughs> It's it's very it's a very simple process to uh, change stuff up a little bit and um, one yeah. of the things that I think helps though is if people actually see a character creation demonstration because you can look at a book and uh, accessibility can come with the fact that the books are huge and so you, people can look at that and just sometimes be overwhelmed but when you break it down and show them how it's done it becomes oh yeah that's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So and you've, and it, you've done a lot of character creation walkthroughs on babies with knives for different systems too, haven't mm -hmm. you? Oh yes, that's something we do on a monthly basis for a wide variety <laughs> of systems because it really does show the accessibility and how easy it is. We've had people come to us and mention, "Oh my gosh, I always thought Mutants and Masterminds took like three hours to make a character. How did you make multiple characters in a forty-minute segment?" And we go from literally concept to finish because we don't sit there and go, oh, we're going to make this, let's skeleton it out. No, we come on air and we're like, deer in the headlights, what am I gonna make? Let's do this. Yeah, and I so mean, nice. if, if the archetypes aren't exactly what you want, then it is perfectly legal to, to swap around skill points or advantages or change out what skills you have. If you, if you don't want your gadgeteer to have a jet pack, you can give them the leaping power or swimming or teleport or just mm -hmm. dump more of those gadget points into having more skills and advantages. So Let's talk real fast about, um, about uh, uh, you know, uh, brand new McNew face. Mm -hmm. what, what, is, what are the archetypes? Explain those just a bit. For folks who are like, so, I don't know anything about this. The the archetypes are are basically the sort of classic kinds of superhero characters uh, that you'll see in the comic books. 
Um, so it will be characters like the energy controller whose primary thing is that they fly and they project some kind of beam of energy and usually can surround themselves with some kind of protective force field or aura. Um, so it's, it's all of the comic book characters that can do those things, you know, ranging from the human torch um, to, you know, a character who's more like Storm, uh, who, you know, might not initially seem like an energy controller, um, but, you know, essentially controls the weather and uses those effects in a similar way. Um, and you've got archetypes like the, you know, the psychic who has mental powers or the powerhouse who is big and strong and invulnerable. Um, and so it's just all of the really easy to relate to uh, kinds of characters that, that I think anybody who's, who knows superheroes is going to be at least passingly familiar with. Yeah, they're, they're deliberately kind of open-ended and easy to pour whatever concept you want into. Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really interesting thing you brought up right there because a lot of people look at archetypes and they kind of get stuck in it when they read energy controller. They're like, well, I need to be fire, ice, uh, you know, mm -hmm. air or something. Yeah. And the truth is you can become a gravity controller. You can become uh, a shadow controller. You can become smoke controller. You can mm -hmm. become sand controller. There are, take energy control and there's so many things it's not just fire ice water etc you there there's a lot you can actually change it to you know uh bandwidth controller that you are radio mm -hmm. you can become you know the radio or something like that um so i also like to think of it as our bender archetype mm -hmm. yeah indeed and, <laughs> and something else that i found is that for people who want to want to jump into mystics be a mage in the long term but they're nervous because it is a, a more complex array they can start with an energy controller. And mm -hmm. that is a great gateway jumping mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. That's a very good point. Yeah, I have a question for the three of you as um, as people who are immersed in this. When we're looking at, you can choose an archetype and that's sort of your, your onboarding, maybe some training wheels for you. Um, but then you've got a host of digital options to to do character creation from roll 20 to uh or here what a hero lab um mm -hmm. you know like there's just a, there's a bunch of uh of different resources out there as a matter of fact we were approached very recently by some college kids whom i believe they are overseas and they just want to as a project create a mobile app that will Ooh. help create and nice. i said i said absolutely you cannot charge for it and anything that you would do would go to you know charity and we would help organize that and um and they wrote a really great sort of uh, approach to that but that's just another example of there's so much it's so accessible to create mm -hmm. these tools is there is there a trade-off if you speed through this creation process I think it's whatever makes it easiest for you to comprehend because some generators and creators make things harder for people actually, while others make it easier. And it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the same for each person. Some mm -hmm. people it's pen and paper is going to be easiest. Some people hero labs easiest, whatever makes it most accessible to you is the right way to do it. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be people who will always like, you know, a car off the rack. There will always be people who like mm -hmm. their car off the rack, but, make some aftermarket modifications and then there's going to be people who want to build it from the the ground up and have that fine level of control and and mm -hmm. get exactly the the tuning they want out of it steve when yeah. you designed this um did you sort of put this this thought in there to allow people to get as crunchy as they want to get or just to be able to get it over with get it in and you know get like get their character in the game and play i mean what well, was that part of the you can see kind of the two extremes when I initially designed it. Um, on the one hand, the PowerPoint system is um, very detailed. And so you have a lot of options for customization. You can, you can do a lot with it. Um, but at the same time, the archetypes are uh, basically where, you know, 99% of the work is done for you. And you can, you can customize them very quickly. You can, you know, fill in a name and a background and a theme and be ready to go. So it was initially sort of providing both ends of the of the spectrum of, you know, basically like immediate here, grab this character and go or, you know, just design your own, you know, from the ground up. Uh, and the options that we've offered since have been kind of to fill in that middle ground 
uh, in between um, to offer um, a little more customization options for the archetypes um, so that there's, there's some more significant choices uh, as far as those go um, and to offer the, the quick start character creation system, which is random, um, that allows you to put together a, you know, a, 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 a properly balanced starting character out of a series of random roles as far as that goes. And the quick start character creation addresses an interesting other challenge for a game like Mutants and Masterminds, which is decision paralysis. Um, one of the one of the challenges. Oh, oh corgi alert! <laughs> you you alerted the corgis. Yeah, they do not care for analysis paralysis. Right? Clearly not. No, they are corgis. Very much know what they want and what they need. Yes, <laughs> the whole the whole notion is foreign. Uh. One of the one of the challenges of a, a, a genre like superheroes, where you can do anything, is oftentimes like what one you know what do I want my character to be. Uh, you know, I could I could be anything, uh, and so sometimes a system like uh, the the quick start generator that basically directs you down a path um, can can start to provide you with with enough limits that your imagination can kind of exert itself and you can come up with some interesting ideas I'll around that. I'll tell you that. Pro providing those limits as well i think it, it falls on the gm uh to kind of mm -hmm. help guide and and there's some comments to that effect i you know i uh played my first uh session of mutants and mastermind with uh apuk um and it, the it was a really um it, he's very good at kind of sharing sort of limits without making you feel limited and that's a talent for sure mm -hmm. um i there's a couple things here let's see uh sean Vieira says uh, also, um, I find useful. Oh, I find this useful. The template tome. Wonder who wrote that. Oh yes, Crystal. <laughs> Helpful with some strange concepts, especially when uh, people want to mash things together. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff says my biggest stumbling block for M and M, uh, and it wasn't character generation, but rather that the PCs are generally optimized to a much greater degree than the published characters. Mm -hmm. So like Captain Thunder or whoever, the leader of the Avengers JLA analog, um, was absolutely meat for starting PCs. Uh, is a tendency to, to load up on luck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would love to tackle that a little bit because that really depends on the group that you're dealing with, the um, where you're playing, because there are some groups online and offline that believe that just because you have certain defensive caps as a PC, you should always hit those problem that it, it, mm -hmm. that some people will come to though is certain archetypes that actually hinders you more than it you might notice initially because for example excuse me if you're playing a mystic you don't really need as much of some of those defenses because you can make it up in your in your powers to say i can raise it up i can drop it down so having those default can actually hurt you because you don't have the ability to reallocate it to i'm going to push this power and make it really really cool mm -hmm. and so you really want to try and keep in mind that just because it's there, it doesn't mean you need to use it. It, um, you know, like the old thing about chefs and that just because it's in your pantry, don't put everything in. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's oh, very, that's why I'm so bad at cooking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, real, oh, go ahead. Alice, go ahead. And so sometimes, you know, a, that kind of optimization can be deceiving because you just want to keep in mind what you want your character to do and build to focus on that. Yeah, I mean, a, a psychic with perception range mental blast doesn't really need an attack bonus of any sort. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Or, um, and, you know, and that psychic can or, say, well, I can raise my, raise my armor up so I don't really need the, to max my parry and dodge necessarily mm -hmm. to the same degree. Also, if I'm going to be, you know, if I'm going to be invisible, hiding elsewhere or hiding behind the brick, I probably don't need them as much. I'll still get hit once in a while with an AE, but, you know, mm -hmm. basically you're building like a mage, you know, in D&D, mm -hmm. you're, you're not needing to be the same level of physical defenses. Which, I like that. I like the granularity of how you think about that, and I think that there's something sort of elegant about sort of leave out stuff. Like really think about what you don't need and how creative you need to get with the stuff that you got. Jay Grace is something really important. It's important for the GM and the player to understand that they can work together to make characters that everyone will have fun with. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a good a good GM will facilitate that. But I want to get to Brian Scott Bailey's uh, comment. Brian says. 
Uh, I disagree. It's very intimidating for many players. Uh, it is many times different from games that don't give as many options. Uh, when you have a more open Ooh. system, there's a lot. Uh, there's a lot there for players. One mm -hmm. thing that I recommend for new players is uh, what a superhero like uh, what a superhero you like would do uh, when you walk through their uh, walk them through the create character creation, um, quick start builds, and that yeah. allow for variations. That's a really well said point. You know, and the other thing about it as well is when we talk about accessibility, we need to kind of broaden our horizon to understand that there may be uh, you know people who are excited to, to dive into the game um maybe are you know math hampered uh, or mm -hmm. dyslexic or you know that doesn't prevent a person from engaging and having fun but um i'll tell you there are just times when it just helps to get the context from someone who's been there so mm -hmm. uh, good point yeah Absolutely. like uh steve was starting to talk about the quick start characters mm. as well and i think that's a, a great place to jump off to especially if we're talking about players being uh, be tackling paralysis or decision paralysis. Uh, just because if you use the quick start guide, whether you roll randomly or whether you, you pick whatever you'd like, uh, you don't have to worry as much about making, making a decision from everything in the store. You just have a dozen or so, well, I guess 20 at a time, uh, different mm -hmm. choices you can make from pretty standard heroic, uh, archetypes that still give you more more control than the the pre-made archetypes so mm -hmm. you can pick between a a speedster a teleporter a a brick a cyborg a monster you know concepts like that and then pick fine tune what within that concept you like so that mm -hmm. way you're not stumbling through the entire book trying to figure out exactly how to build whatever you want everything is pre-built for you and you just select bits and pieces off the cart yeah absolutely and having those templates around i think that if you're trying to introduce a brand new player go one step back beyond that and say you read comic books you like superhero movies or tv shows what's your favorite character scarlet witch okay well here's something that's similar to scarlet witch for us to start off with or mm -hmm. iron man well here's a battle suit the battle suit archetype is in the book here's a battle suit to start off with and let's let's take this and then fine tune what abilities do you want to keep what abilities do you not want and so that limits it to their imagination rather than here's once again the book and intimidating mm -hmm. them and yeah. like you yeah. find you'll find that a lot of people know exactly what superhero is the first superhero they've ever wanted to play. <laughs> and yeah. from the game master perspective, it can often be really useful to have a few guest NPC heroes who can serve as sort of guest stars to drop in for players uh, to to play those characters if they're new to the game. Mm -hmm. If if they just you know want to get their feet wet and they want to try the game out it can be useful to say, hey, here's a character, you know, who's a regular, like, super hero in this, in this setting, play this character for this game, and see, you know, get a feel for it. And then if you really like it, we'll design your character. That's a great suggestion. There are a couple other things here uh, that I want to touch on. Um, uh, Alice, you always want to hear this. Yeah, Alice is right. Mm -hmm. Says Jacob Blackbond. So put that on your wall <laughs> and your, Thanks, your scrapbook. Um, let's see. Here's, uh, I believe this is for us, Jay. I'm going to presume it is. Uh, would you say that games like Mutants and Masterminds generally should have a straightforward set of rules first? Then, after a certain level of system mastery, they can kind of start looking past the curtain. Uh, that's how we do it in video games. Oh, oh gosh, I will tell you right now, I hate that level of introduction in board games, in tabletop role-playing games, in just about any game that I deal with. For my personal preference and flavor and style, I absolutely hate the here are the dumbed down rules and here are the real rules because it causes a lot more problems than it helps in most cases that mm. I've dealt with personally. Oh, yeah. If it works for you, fantastic. It has not worked for my gaming groups or the people that we teach. It creates an even starker sort of uh, uh, divide between, you know, new, new people and older players to the degree that it doesn't sound like that would even mesh. But um, I'm, I'm actually going to say the exact opposite. Uh -huh. I, mm. It's just going to vary depending on your time, your group, your needs and your personal philosophies. I, I like having a 
simplified or streamlined like essential version of a rule set that I can show people like the uh, the old beginner box for Pathfinder first edition or mm -hmm. uh, the basic heroes handbook which uses the same rules but has a very streamlined character creation system I mean I I prefer to or I like systems that introduce concepts a little at a time or or ease you into the really complex elements mm -hmm. Again, so it works differently for everyone. I do find something interesting in what Crystal just said, where mm. the character creation is more streamlined. I think that can be very helpful. What we run into a lot of times with those simplified rules is that when it comes to combat or things like that, or your skills, so the simplified rules tend to not end up covering them. So people end up going, well, what am I doing? There's nothing here to support it. And it's in the real rules. And then later mm -hmm. on, that becomes a problem. But I definitely am strong agreement that it can help in the character creation facet of things things for people. And I think Crystal raises an interesting point that a lot of times it's also a matter of presentation. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's how the information is presented um, and how the, the, the text walks you through, um, the, through, the, through the rules as far as learning them goes. Um, and oftentimes there's, there's a real fine art to uh, progressing somebody to learning a system in a book um, as compared to, um, you know, just sort of giving them this big dump of information and saying, yeah, figure it out. <laughs> you yeah, know, it's I all here. It. I hate it when people take that big dump and I'm just like, I don't even know how to process all of this. Um, <laughs> I so, knew when I said it, Troy. I knew <laughs> when I said it. I felt like you were teeing it up just for me. I couldn't resist. Um, you know, one of the things that's interesting, there's a theme here when we look at sort of what we've talked about and the the differing sort of approaches and thoughts on what can work or cannot work. What, what I love about all of this is that, you know, um, Brian Scott Bailey, uh, Sean Vieira, some of these folks that um, are sharing that I think that we can kind of get tricked into there being a one size fits all kind of shoehorn everybody into this mm -hmm. pipeline and then on, sure. you know, and I, I think that the beauty of this, whether you're going theater of the mind or you're doing a little more structure with the roll 20 or, you know, that there, mm -hmm. there's about a million different ways to get the thing done. The bottom line is making sure that you're just being very true to the people who are playing and listening and, and that the players are also, you know, doing the same. There's a question here from, uh, our old DT Sketch Buccino. I just love saying that. I say that name just randomly when I'm at home. I'm like, I'll just <laughs> blurt it out and people will be like, uh, say what? I'll be like, DT Sketch Buccino says, we could use an updated Mutants and Masterminds archetype archive collection. Hmm. That was like the, the second edition version. Yeah. 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 That's an interesting notion. Watching the mm -hmm. pen and that sorry, DT. Cool. Sorry, DT Sketch Pacino, you do not get into the Tome of Tasks. You uh, will not get on the board today. Sorry. You don't need to judge people like that. Oh, it's a game we're playing. It's a meta game. That it's we're a game playing. you're playing, Troy. Yeah, you are the only one playing this game. Well, I mean, people do win. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, me anyway. So, um, awesome. That's great. And then, uh, yeah, folks are talking about quick starts and archetypes and all that stuff. But, yeah, I think that the theme here is really making it accessible to everybody. So I have a question for the for the people here with me. Mm -hmm. When you're dealing with making superheroes or any character for any game, do you ever look for inspiration elsewhere to start with? Because a lot of people use different other things like you know existing character portraits or music. Crystal? Uh, I mean, sometimes it really depends on the context and the character. Mm -hmm. uh, for m m specifically, uh, I got nothing. <laughs> okay. uh, do we mention that it's about 80,000 degrees in Seattle right now? And yeah. so, yeah. Yes. Yeah. We need to point a fan at her right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I, I have. I'm, yeah. I'm just down the street. Like, you have, um, uh, like, a wild herd of, like, 80 corgis running around. And so that doesn't help. <laughs> No, that well, doesn't help with all that fur packing in the insulating. Yeah. There. Well, it's yeah, it's only two corgis, but they do produce enough fur to insulate the house. But they're both like 500 pounds, which is really weird. 
Oh my. Um, they're 25 so pounds. So where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah, they are really, they're little and cute. Yeah. Well, I did want to bring up that, you know, if you suffer from analysis paralysis, another thing that you can mm -hmm. do is just turn it all off and go <laughs> and, you know, the comic books, look at a character that you like okay. in the comic books and try right. and look at that. Nice. Um, Brandon loves to use songs. Uh, nice. I don't know if I should tell you guys what songs he likes to use, but mm -hmm. uh, he is, uh, he has built more than four superheroes out of Taylor Swift songs, for example. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Well, I guess you'll have to ask him when he, you get him on because we're going to get him. him. We got to have him on. Yeah. And they, and yeah. three of them, at least three, maybe two of them were made in Mutants and Mastermind. So there we go. <laughs> that so I put, is... put that aside to spring on Brandon when you finally get him on. <laughs> yeah. That go. is so great. And, you know, so go and just let yourself be inspired by whatever you want to do and go, huh, I wonder what I can do with this. And then go to the system and try and emulate what you've already thought about. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's why I was asking about the, uh, the inspiration. But I think we wanted to show something else, another method now. Well, what is that? Well, we, were, we were we were about? going to talk a bit uh, yeah, talk a bit about the uh, kind of as an extension of the quick start the basic heroes handbook mm -hmm. yes yes which again kind of does a lot of the the work for you and presents a broad concept that you pick an array of powers from an array of skills from deciding kind of I want to be a crime fighter but do I want to be like like the brooding, mean, mm -hmm. tough crime fighter, or do I want to be the quippy, leaping around crime fighter? Do I want, you know, that's, some gadgets? That's actually, that's actually something I really like about Basic Heroes Handbook, Crystal, is that the, the decisions are presented not just in terms of their game mechanics, but they're presented descriptively um, in, in very much that way of, you know, do you want your, your character to be quick-witted or do you want your character to be thoughtful are they scholarly are they brave um <laughs> and and so there are real like mechanics attached to those choices i'm a mediocre um, game designer but a good writer <laughs> but well you know i i think that writing is a big part like we were talking about presentation earlier writing and presentation are a big part of game design um, and I think that how you present uh, choices and information to the players can be as important as what those mechanical choices are, you know, in game terms. That is super, super true because Steve has designed games that took on to, went on to additional additions and the system actually mechanics wise never changed, but certain perceptions in the way that he rewrote things had. And mm -hmm. so people will actually think, oh no, that system changed from that to that. And you yep. look at the mechanics and you're like, nope, it's still actually the plus die and the minus die. You just <laughs> hear it differently. Yeah, right. yeah, in I different mean, context, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Se Mutants mm -hmm. and Masterminds second edition is actually really similar to Mutants and Masterminds third edition. Yeah, we very. just changed a few names and, and changed yep. how things are grouped and organized. Like, See, and I love this theory craft and kind of pulling apart <laughs> sort of this piece because I think it really does make you a better GM and, and a better player. Um, some folks might feel like you're kind of spoiling the whole thing, but it's meant, it's a tool, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you pull back the curtain, we're all just little men in suits with a big megaphone. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm actually right. a sack of like 40 ferrets, so. Uh, oh God, that sounds hot and uncomfortable. It's really, yeah. they're really wiggly right now too. <laughs> <laughs> Explains a lot about you, Troy. It yeah. does, doesn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. my wandering attention, my <laughs> many personalities. <laughs> we weren't gonna say it. <laughs> Your ability to do 300 things at once somehow. And mm -hmm. not any of them very well. Um, I th want to thank everybody who is popping in and sharing. What a phenomenal um, uh, conversation that's going on here. And I really, I think what I might try to do is pull some of the conversation out and do a write-up. Uh, there's some really great thoughts in here uh, that I will steal and pretend like they're mine. And uh, let's see here. Of course, Jay's in there sharing links like a, a link uh, wizard. And... Let's see, I'm not again, but for, yeah, I didn't know where I was going with that. I was like, it's kind of hard to read and be witty at the same time. Yeah, uh, yeah it's true. Basic you're handbook. Doing very yeah. well at it. Thank you so much. Uh, you would say that because you're very kind. Uh, 
Yeah, so so we've got so we've covered um, uh, making it challenging, uh, kind of taking mm-hmm. the tough route. Do we want to unpack that a little bit more, or any more about sort of the mechanized processes? Or uh, mm-hmm. Alice, you had said something about rock paper scissor theory. Oh yeah. So something that I deal with a lot with a lot of people is when they first start, because they're so intimidated, they tend to go, okay, I'll just play a fighter. I'll just play a break. I'll I'll just play that. But and then they come back and they have problems with certain scenarios and they go, well, everyone there was basically the same type. And so I want to just cover real quick that similar to other games, different roles are important, just like in when you look in a comic book or when you watch a superhero movie or a TV mm-hmm. show that, you know, rock, paper, scissors, one will be stronger against something else than the next thing. And just keep that in mind when, when you're building, because otherwise, if you're going in and you're going, coming back and saying, well, we all failed that one because everyone, you know, be, and so the GM must have done something wrong with this and that. And then I ask, well, what was your build group, group composition? And I find out that all five of them were the same exact <laughs> archetype. You're like, that's a problem. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nobody well, that- knows not the same archetype. So just, that was something I think is a very important thing for people who are character building, especially at a table with each other. Well, that's and that points to something that we were talking about uh, before the the start of the stream was that also the idea that character creation in a lot of RPGs, but also particularly mutants and masterminds, is a group activity, mm-hmm. uh, and that um, something that we emphasize in the Super Team Handbook is the the idea that you're not just building superhero characters, you're building a team of superhero characters. Uh, and so there has to be some back and forth between the players and the game master to talk about the different roles that the, the characters are going to play in the context of the team. And, and, what those, and we, we have a whole set of roles, uh, two whole sets of roles, in fact, in uh, Super Team Handbook uh, that talk about both the characters' sort of tactical, power-related things, the stuff they can do, but also their their sort of role overall in the team as a personality, uh, and how you know you can sort of mix and match those, and how players can you know talk about where they want their character to be in in those various combinations. Mm-hmm. Getting the group to go. Oh, go ahead, Crystal. I was just going to add like one of the most fun characters I've played in third edition didn't hit any of her power level caps. She was. Her, her primary power was invisibility, and she focused on uh, team team actions, like aiding mm-hmm. others, doing team attacks, uh, interaction skills with the setup uh, mm-hmm. advantage. And she didn't land many hits on her own, but she helped the characters who hit hard hit much harder. And that was surprisingly satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, it, characters can be pretty crazy like that. And you can also say, and you can at the end say, well, you know, look at how many times you wouldn't have hit because, you know, without me and therefore I did mm-hmm. that much damage. <laughs> yeah, Jason says, uh, I get pretty deep in theory sometimes. A lot of the mechanics you could give numbers instead of names to uh, really open up the possibilities of descriptors. But I know that that would be much less accessible. Interesting that you mentioned that. I wanted to kind of bring this piece up as, uh, as, you know, Crystal and Steve, when you look at the work that you do, um, I do remember a comment, uh, something about, uh, boy, I love it when people sort of uh, coach me on on how, you know, the game should be played before they realize who I am. Um, I'm making the game, you know, it's uh, and to have kind of this sort of one size fits all and and sort of the the piece where people can get you know every in video games it happens where people always want they want all the gold everything should be easy and they want to have um and they want to have um uh access to all of the wonderful stuff but mm-hmm. making that a situation wherein um you know you, you can communicate but that actually takes away all the fun like you want to give a little to get a little you want to sort mm-hmm. of sure to, yeah sure. yeah in the video really game limits your variables and so therefore you have to go yes. and choose a b c d or e in a tabletop role-playing game you are about the world is your oyster and mm-hmm. thinking outside the box doing things that are a bit quirky a bit different mm-hmm. those should be things that can be handled and will add a lot yeah. more of the experience to it and that's one of the reasons why when you're looking at numbers it can 
overshadow that and certain systems do it more than others by all means That's and i think true. that once again going back to who you are and who your table is can help that a lot and it can yeah. be really freeing just to let go and sort of say i'll take that piece i don't need that piece yeah and we well, all and that raises to... an interesting point too um go ahead alice uh, I was just going to say, we all have different perspectives as players and GMs, and I think that it's really awesome because, you know, like uh, Troy was just saying, when you go to a table and you're like, ooh, they get to teach me the way they see the game before I play, because you will mm -hmm. find hundreds of, well, thousands of different ways of viewing it, and nothing is necessarily wrong. It's just, once again, the perception of the way that the rules are written, as long as mm -hmm. you're following it somewhat. What, One of the ways that that mutants and masterminds as a system deals with that whole limitless range of possibilities in terms of character design is also the way that um, the extra effort and power stunt rules come into play. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that often uh, some people find problematic when they're trying to design superhero characters is they, they're like, I wanna build in every possible thing this character could do um, and the way yeah, the system I, is I designed. I want to build my boxing glove arrow and my taser arrow and my right. suction cup arrow. You know, and here is the entire grimoire of every spell that my mystic character knows, all 300 of them, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the way the system is designed, there's space in the game for improvisation uh, so that you can come up with those really quirky one time tricks. Um, that are like, oh, this would be perfectly cool, it's like super cool for my character to do right in this moment um, mm -hmm. that aren't specifically called out on your character sheet um, because there's such a weird corner case that they would never, they're only ever going to come up once in your campaign um, so yeah, that like, you can do that. Yeah, like you might think it's cool if your electricity controller can use their hands as a defibrillator. That's not going to come up very often in game. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, as a game master, I'd feel bad about like making you pay points for that, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm like, you know, now I have to make it happen because you, <laughs> you know, like you've spent points on it. Like, uh, you bring uh, up a fantastic point about the, about that system. Look at comic books and how every, in every comic book, someone pushes their power in a way that mm -hmm. they're not supposed to be able to push it. And so this is a yeah. great way to emulate that, that, you know, in this issue, they d use their hands as defibrillators, but they shouldn't be able to do that because that's not within their normal power range. Or the mm -hmm. next episode, they decide, mm -hmm. next episode of comic, they decide to uh, phase their hand through something <laughs> that normally couldn't. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's a great way to emulate that. The classic, I mean, the Flash does everything with speed somehow. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, somehow, <laughs> yeah, yes, exactly. But, but notice it's not always the same thing and not always, always. It's just mm -hmm. speed is, you know, he has certain <laughs> certain things in his character build he paid points for. And then every issue he does something weird with a power stunt. I think he has a uh, has an extra few points put into special power stunts or something in some fashion because oh, yeah. he does mm -hmm. do, that's his favorite thing to do is power stunts. And it, it can make for some really fun, like gaming role-playing character development moments. Like there's a, mm -hmm. there's an issue of Ms. Marvel where she figures out how to use her stretching power to time travel <laughs> by, <laughs> by theorizing yep. that extra mass she develops has to has come to from somewhere. somewhere. Yep. It must be borrowed from herself bef like before and after that moment. So like when she's shrinking, that is like her in another mm -hmm. time growing yeah. or stretching. <laughs> that, that is like the perfect example of a player convincing their game master that they can use their elongation power to time travel. Right? That's like, brilliant. You just blew yeah. my mind, literally. I'm just sitting, I'm back, I'm thinking, wow, yeah, it has to go somewhere. Right. G. Willa Wilson is an amazing writer. Yes. And, and just now phenomenal. the Eisner Award winning G. Willa Wilson. This is, uh, uh, Apuk says, uh, yeah, the Flash has the most lenient GM ever when it comes to power stunts. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. well, on the other hand, though, the, the Flash's GM gets a lot of mileage out of, of Flash's power stunts because they're always like screwing up the timeline mm -hmm. and like sending it, catapulting him to parallel earths. And mm -hmm. so I, I, as a game master, I'd be super happy with yeah, it's that. Like, oh, you say your power can push you into alternate times or other worlds, really? huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
<laughs> uh, right, right. Yeah, well, so that's that, exploitable. That's, that's so funny. People here are saying the, kind of the same thing. I think it's important that GMs have a setup. This is Jay Gray. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Uh, to allow them a way to award players for using their powers imaginatively. Uh, my yes. reflecting on a pook as a GM, he just he just said, "Wow, you did so good. Now tell me exactly how you killed that guy." And I, you know, like mm-hmm. he, you just. Yeah, but what kind of flourish did you use? And it really, at first I was kind of shocked, but that's what makes it fun. Yeah, well, the classic, you know, um, power stunt situation for, for game masters to set up is to deliberately create a challenge that the character's normal powers can't solve. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, say, okay, come up with a creative way to do it. Uh, you know, they yeah. have the mechanics for it, so. All right, Bullet Man, you have to fight the ghost. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And I think this is actually a fantastic segue for something that Steve kind of hit, hit on a little bit. A lot of games don't have something that Mutants Masterminds has, which is a, a an area for you to really write in complications. There are many systems that do, mm-hmm. but this is not a core thing that's in every system. And I find that a lot of people can, you know, they go, well, what, what's a complication? And so that's something I think people should sit down because he just mentioned a number of complications that Flash gets, which is, you know, mm-hmm. whenever I screw, whenever I use a power stunt, the GM gets to screw with me, basically. That's one <laughs> of his flaws. Mm-hmm. And complications aren't there to screw you. And that that's something that, you know, it can be a little bit of a hedge or a wall I see a lot of people dealing with. Mm-hmm. It's not something there to screw you it is something there to make an epic story with your gm and so coming up with flaws and complications can be a very good thing i have a character i have some characters that have page long flaws and complication sheets (laughs) (laughs) working through some stuff (laughs) yeah i (laughs) working through some stuff but look at how emo and how complicated superheroes are in comic books you know the good ones all have these lists that you scroll and it goes on and and on and on and on and on (laughs) yeah new players i always see say like well why would i take any complications and they try to pick things that will never ever come up like Mm -hmm. a fear of man-made satellites and like motivation (laughs) justice right Mm -hmm. and so they spend their first session not getting any hero points well the person who takes like a fear of cats and vulnerable to fire has a nice little stack of hero points in front of them Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. interesting i didn't think about that facet of this is (laughs) is utilizing as sort of a show don't tell you know how other people are doing the thing mm-hmm. and yep. adding some texture but then also getting you know with that risk getting some reward yeah well one of like, the nice things about the the structure of complications in mutants and masterminds is because they're directly linked to hero point awards mm-hmm. um it encourages the players to introduce their own complication their characters complications mm-hmm. into play because one of the things that i always had a difficulty with as gm was keeping track of everybody's complications. Yeah. Uh, you know, when each hero has three or four of them and there are five or six players remembering, you know, what, who everybody's, you know, particular things are, you know, got complicated, uh, no pun intended, um, you know. <laughs> and so it was, it was really helpful when the players had a direct motivation to, to bring up their own complications and say, hey, this is a perfect moment for my, you know, um, thing, you know, with that, you know, uh, radio show host who hates me to, you know, come in on. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, here, have a hero point, you know. And Jay and... Jonah Johnson would talk about this on his radio show. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Right. <laughs> you know, you're clearly responsible for this. Exactly. And for that's threat and a menace. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's something else that uh, new players a lot of times are like, why do I want to take a day job that just is going, you know, that's going to be so complicated and hard to deal with. Well, yes, yes. but if you take that day job, <laughs> you know, if you take that day job and you have to make choices and you have people at your day job that are screwing with your life, that's a good thing because that makes story. Right. Yeah. And you can the hear a thing point. we call conflict. Yeah. Well, here, Norbert, Norbert Franz says, uh, I came up with the character, the angler, just super good at fishing. Who had one at one point <laughs> caught a time travel fish to gain time travel? Example sure, sure. of a power stunt or improvisation. Sure, sure. So, I mean, the absolutely. Things, the things you can do with just the salmon of wisdom alone, I mean. <laughs> right? And tasty. A golden wishing carp. Right. <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, What's no fur bearing trout. A, f- <laughs> a fur bearing trout. You... 
I'm Wait, not. Fa- I'm not Troy familiar. know about the furbearing trout? No. no. Oh no. They're like a hairy, a hairy fish. A hairy. Okay, I'm gonna move on here. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah, yeah. The, the folks are really enjoying the what complications and that that whole process allows to mm-hmm. to uh, listen. Dog, I'm not talking Why to you. It? I'm talking. Make your best friend. I'm on the internet. <laughs> Okay, um, but uh, sorry, my my brother's dog thinks that I am speaking to him when I'm actually speaking <laughs> to you all. Uh, how rude. Uh, yeah, yeah, folks really, really enjoy that texture that it adds um, mm-hmm. uh, for sure, for sure. Uh, you know what? Um, we are we could do this for another hour. I mean, I can't, um, uh, and neither can um, we. We contractually cannot speak on the internet for more than an hour. It's uh, just part of the rules. We have to play mm-hmm. by the rules. Uh, but the power uh, only lasts an hour. A complication, right? Am wow. um, I ramping up? I gotta go. Uh, but uh, I, I want to thank the pollution in Earth's atmosphere. I can his, only uh... maintain my enormous size for two minutes. And I'm pollution eating <laughs> man, so for two minutes. And he used to go feed all the, was it ferrets that are inside your suit? Yeah, they are <laughs> hungry. <laughs> they want some cookies. The, the 40 little ferrets need to come out and play for a while. They do. They need uh, to get some air. But, wow, that's um, an image. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Well, air absolutely. ferrets are a great idea for a super villain. <gasps> yes. Yeah, air ferrets. I like it. See what we've done? We're making magic here. Um, okay, here's the question. As... Do they control the wind, or are they a flock of ferrets in tiny little biplanes? Mm-hmm. I think they're in tiny little biplanes. Po- or they could be little gliders. Many. They could be little gliders. Little jetpacks. Yes, little jetpacks. Oh, jetpacks. I don't know. I'm liking the idea it. of the glider or of the mm. uh, the biplanes because then we get to put them in like little uh, goggles. Have, well, they can wear goggles if they have jetpacks. Okay, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, rocketeer. Like, yeah, I was, yeah. I was gonna say, could we make it like a retro jetpack? Ferreteers. Yeah. The ferreteers. Yep. And you can have uh, little antennae coming out of the goggles and all. And <gasps> yes. Oh, yes. absolutely. And little scarves. Yes. And what's what are they trying to do? They just want to. I. I mean, I assume we'll they're mostly later. just a force yeah, for yeah. chaos, but they're very easily mind controlled. So, like, uh, they're a very common goon squad for for <laughs> villains who don't minions. take themselves seriously. Please? Yeah, they're the new minions. They're so much cuter than the minions, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. That's true. All right. No, I got to put these in an adventure. What do, What do we got coming up that I can put air ferrets in? Oh, I my love gosh, it. Awesome. I love that this is how air ferrets were born. Um, yes. Remember when, folks, you saw it right. here first. Right. Um, you see them in a Mutants and Masterminds adventure, you'll be like, oh, I remember that. And then you can tell your friend, like, oh, they said 39 and they're really 40 ferrets. <laughs> and, and you know what? The 40th ferret is you. <laughs> the viewer. You need to monogram their scarves so that each of their names is at the ed- edge of them. <laughs> I gotta be or their numbers. The numbers. That's even better. Mm-hmm. Therefore, we can prove there are 40 of them. That was so good. I'm sorry. I love it. And But I just love it. Like, the 40th ferret is <laughs> you. Mm-hmm. Another t-shirt idea. Yes. Right As we spiral there. down the ferret hole, that clearly means Wait, that it's time to wrap. Does done. this mean you have to sell Troy with every copy of that now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, because that will be a delight to all. Oh, dear. <laughs> Just sitting in their I'm living sure. room watching. Hi. What are you doing? Hey, what are you doing now? I'm your 38 ferret. You just uh, you'll stop them every 10 minutes and be like, well, but from the internet, we've got. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, I should just do that wherever I go. I kind of do, actually, now that I think about it. Um, Alice, you are always a delight and so much fun. I appreciate your insight and your wisdom and your thoughtfulness oh. uh, and for taking time to hang out with us. It really means a lot. I love hanging out with you guys and I, <laughs> oh. I adore all of you. So I'm so glad that we became friends. Well, it's great to have you, you on. Yes, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on. 100 percent. We're going to have to. More games. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to do that. Uh, have you on again? And uh, I, so, tell us real quick. Give us the rundown on all of the goods. Uh, it's babies with knives. Okay, uh, so I'm terrible at promoting myself, but yes, I am the one of the two hosts of Babies with Knives podcast. I'm also doing some freelance work with uh, Frog God Games, so I'm doing their YouTube channel now. Nice. And yeah, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you've also got a Discord server, right? 
yes, I have a Discord server and Troy can provide you guys the link. Please come join us on Babies with Knives Discord because that's where we're doing most of our giveaways. We have a couple companies now that when they're doing future months with us, they are giving us copies of their game to give away. We are always open to teaching you guys new games and such like that. So, and we love teaching you in some masterminds and talking to you in some masterminds. So come join us for- Really? phenomenal community that you built there very Thank active you. very engaged so fun i find myself losing hours you know to having chit chats and stuff and everyone's just a really good sport and a lot of fun we uh, pride ourselves on build, building very strong community of just amazing people we try and make sure we keep it that way yeah a nice safe place to kind of learn to have fun make new friends and enjoy yourself um 100 and of, as always crystal and steve um you know this is so much fun anything that we want to talk about before we before we uh, start, you know, washing uh, our ferrets. What? Uh, I would say uh, get ready because Danger Zones is coming. Uh, mm -hmm. Is that next week? What, yeah, I believe what so. What does time mean? Right. Oh. Well, yeah, Danger Zones stretches, starts releasing so. next week. But Parade Route is available now, right? Uh, yes. For freezies. That is a, a, pre, a free preview if you want to see what Danger Zones is going to be all about. Yeah, but lots of exciting locations coming starting soon. Right on. And Steve, how about you? Anything that you've got that you'd like to uh, to pitch or share? or? Um, I mean, folks should definitely check out Danger Zones when they, when they hit. Um, and yeah, Steve wrote several of them. Yes, in fact, I'm looking forward to seeing them in their, their final form. Um, and, you know, otherwise, you know, just folks stay safe, you know, wear a mask when you're out, you know, look because, after each other, you know, because heroes wear masks. real heroes wear masks to protect others, mm -hmm. your mothers. Yes. Oh, and others and your mothers. Yes. Um, also, mothers. I want to say, and mothers and brothers. Um, and um, I don't and know anything mothers, else brothers? for the mothers. And this mother's brothers, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but no others. Um, I wanted to um, talk about Gen Con. It is mm. three days away. And Wait, what? Yeah, right. I know, right? Last week we were like, it can't be a week away. Um, but it's three days away on Sunday at 3.30 uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Um, mm. That would be the – what uh, day is that? Noon? Yeah, it's the – it's the second. Uh, yes, it we will August be doing second. Mutants and Masterminds Sunday. Yes, the first ever. The first yeah. ever, only because it rhymed. <laughs> <laughs> we can get rid of the alliteration, but we can't get rid of the rhyme, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got a, you know some big plans for that. Uh, uh, our freebooters, wow, they have. I, mean, I think we have like thirty events popping off. Um, they're running games. They're running streams. You can check that all out on our page um, uh, over at Gen Con. We'll make sure to provide you with the link. But we've also got, uh, you know, Ian's running. Um, uh, uh, he is running uh, games for the Expanse. We mm -hmm. have a panel that we're calling Happy Birthday, Green Ronin, our 2020 releases. Because we're 20 in 2020. So um, that's kind of amazing. That's one yeah, good right? thing that's happened this year. Um and then just a ton of other stuff. Like if I really, we'd have a whole nother program if I went through and read all this kind of stuff. So don't even try to make me, but go over and check it out, sign up and let us know if you have any questions. They are cheap and or free and uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you everybody for listening. Thank you for your questions and your thoughtful commentary. I definitely do want to mind the, and kind of write up an article based on the wisdom that you shared. Um, thank you folks for hanging out for an hour. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. But now we are done. Take care, everybody. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for inviting me on. One hundred percent. We'll have you back. All right. Bye, bye, everyone. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye now. Bye, bye.